I'm the guy who invented the thing that's gonna take us out of this place. If you could read my mind, you would know what kind of pajamas I want when it comes to bedtime. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas They let me be what I want to be Am I re-rolling them? Yeah, go ahead and roll. I mean, unless you really like your idea. Just fake it and say it's... Okay, well, we don't have that many. Wait a minute, we didn't even intro the show. Nine. This is the intro right here. Alright. Alright, well, you find that. Hey, everyone. I'm Ian. This is Marcus. This is Let Me Pitch This To You. Uh, this is the Idea Podcast, where we talk about ideas. We share idea, share our ideas or creative stories we come up with the week. Last episode, we promised to do a grab bag episode. Some of you, um, all of you who follow the show, meaning Matt and Jeremy, have sent in, and my mom sent in an idea. Anyway, <laughs> uh, sent in ideas via email. We compile the list. We have a die. We roll the list. We pull the idea out of the hat, and we just have to, like riff off the idea right then and there no prior thinking about it so that's this episode um but more collaboratively than normal yeah kind of well like how it was last time i think we've done one other grab bag maybe two but like all the we've done i think two or three grab bags anyway grab bags are more much much more collaborative Mm -hmm. because they're not our ideas yeah. So we kind of just try to hash it out and, and do it the best we can. And we don't have, like, any prep time. Yeah. Like, my prep time is... I mean, I don't have prep time anyways, because I come up with my ideas, like, on the drive here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird. Who's won more? I don't know. Me. Actually, you probably have. You put more effort into it. That's because I do all the effort into the editing and the... Audio yeah, I put a ton of effort into editing. I've, you know I've successfully it? edited out one thing. You've edited out one joke ever. Marcus, Marcus, you know how much editing it required to make episode 11 as crappy as it was? <laughs> that took so much you know how much, how much effort I had to put in to make sure nobody would ever hear Blake's idea and then be like, what the frick? Get these two guys fired. Get that guy back. Yeah. <laughs> that took some work. I know, right? No, Ian's, Ian's successfully done one thing in editing, and it's ended up a hilarious joke I made in like two episodes ago. That's it. No, I do a lot of other editing. Yeah, right. Sometimes. Hardly ever. Not um, as much now that we got the new microphone, so we don't each have our own mic, and we have like the boom mic. It makes it makes it way easier because I don't have to sync up the audio and the video, and there's no background noise to deal with. Okay. Anyway, so you got your idea. I mean, I rolled, I got a nine, I got an idea from Matt, it's for a movie or a book. And it's not one we've already done, right? It's not one we've already done, All right. unless I don't remember it, and, um, oh boy, there's just a lot of reading, hold on. Uh, whew, let's see how I do. <coughs> Excuse me. A life pod is floating in space, like the opening to Aliens. I've never seen Aliens. You ever seen Alien? <laughs> no. Ali- okay, Alien is the first one. Aliens. Is it says Aliens. One. Okay. There's an S. I'm trying to think the second one. I I don't remember if I finished the second. I've one. never seen either of them. All right, go um, ahead. I was picked up um, by this massive ship. The lone survivor inside the pod is woken up from a suspended animation, and all the people on the massive ship are acting really strangely, um, like hurrying out of of rooms. For no reason, or starting off, or staring off into space all the time. Starting. Uh, the survivor tries to figure out uh, what happened to, oh, her. It's a girl. To her from the time she got uh, in the pod until now. She doesn't know how long she's been out for or where she is, and she can't uh, get a straight answer from anybody on the ship. She starts um, seeing even. Sh- See, seeing even stranger behavior from the crew on the ship, like seeing a crewman walk into a wall over and over, but then the next day the same crewman will be acting normally. Eventually, after more and more um, revelations and investigations, she'll find out that this ship has... Sorry. Um, 
has the last of the human race on board and has just been floating meaninglessly through space for thousands or millions of years. The crew are all clones of original crew and every time one of the clones starts malfunctioning to the great uh, to a great enough degree, some automated system in the ship collects them, um, disposes of them, splits uh, out another one, spits out another one, and they all ha uh, and they all have that copy of a copy of a copy of a copy problem. So the whole thing is this depressing spiral of horrific failure. Okay, cool. Matt, we try to keep everything kind of light on this show. This is really dark. The heck? Was okay. it like, what? This, they were spitting out more pods? Is no, spitting out more clones. More clones, yeah. Yeah. So, like... Was the person in the pod a clone? No. Okay. Hold on. Uh, hold on. There's a that little... was hard to follow for a second. Though. It's because that I'm was... a bad reader. I understand everything. No, no, that's though. fine. But I'll, yeah. I'll explain everything in a second. This is different. Okay. At the end, she finds herself in the situation, uh, sorry, in the section of the ship where the clones are grown, and she finds that there's one of her just waiting there. In the cloning, uh, cloning scene, she sees the ship's defect clone collection machine coming for her. Hmm. Okay, so essentially here's what's going on. Um, this chick is in a floating pod or whatever, kind of just like something happened to her ship so she launched out and put herself in suspended animation. She was picked up by this huge ship that has a bunch of really weird people on it, but they're all humans. I think she's a human. I don't know for sure. I'm just going to say she is. Um, everybody's like really weird and like not functioning properly. She comes to find out it's because the last of humanity is on this ship and while they've been dying or getting hurt and stuff, um, the ship, on, something on the ship has been killing them, and then, but before they kill them, taking part of their DNA and cloning them. Yeah. So the reason everybody's so weird and messed up is that, hmm, every, it's a copy of a copy of a copy, because it's not, they're not necessarily perfect one-to-one -one copies, so yeah. there's a little bit left behind each time, so since it's been going on for millions of years, there's so many copies of the same thing that they're getting stupider and worse, and then... She finds, yeah. like, as she explores the ship, she finds this area where she essentially... Nice podcasting, Marcus. Not putting your phone on silent. Um, that I'm was a good podcaster. My phone lives on silent. That was an alarm. So it's not the, my phone is on silent. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Here's a good, here's a good thing to make fun of me for. Marcus, what do you have an alarm for 445 in the <laughs> evening? And I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to check to see if Goodness. there's more alarms. <laughs> oh, man. So while Marcus is doing that... Uh, um, no, so she then goes yeah. to see if, like, what's going on. She finds the place where everything's being cloned and stuff, and she sees a clone of herself being grown, and then the machine that disposes of the malfunctioned oh. humans coming for her. Okay. And then it ends. That's what we have to work with. So oh, quick, wow. Ian, say something clever. I don't know. I don't know where that could go. That's so different. Say yeah. that. Say that last bit again. She sees what's coming to eat her again. Not just eat her. I don't. Th I don't think it's an eating machine. Or not she sees like, the thing that disposes of the malfunctioned humans. And like, it, does it like consume them or something? Or like, what does it do? Like, does it? I, I didn't know what what was in there. As far as like, I, Ian, you have read and heard. Or you've heard literally and know everything about this story. No, I know, story but you said everything a little backwards, so I just want to make sure I, I said everything anything. word for word. I mean, it took me a few tries, but it's I still okay. said it word for word. It's okay, it always takes us a few tries. Um, oh, man, I don't know. That's a good idea. Like, I like it. Um, I mean, so I feel here, like it, it has to be some kind of government. name. It has to be some kind of government conspiracy. I don't think Clearly. we even have to go anywhere around there. You don't even want to go that far? No, sci-fi. No, it's just going to be sci-fi bullcrap. The but girl... Give, we're going to give her a name. Lafania. Okay, I hate you. <laughs> no, something better. Um, Anything better. Sophie. We could call her dog and it'd be better. <laughs> Sophie. Hello, Sophie. Sophie, fair enough. Okay, Sophie wakes Sophie up. Sophie Willis-Bred. Willis okay, bread. do we want there to be any significance to Sophie beforehand? 
Where's she from? Before she want... gets cloned? Yeah. No, so, like... I mean, is she cloned? Here's what I think is more interesting. To end it in such a way that she... Okay. Like, and... okay, here's an idea. So this is a very short bit. Like, there's not a lot to... Let's let's work on it as if it was like a trailer, like a movie, like a trailer or a teaser to something, and we need to. Oh, I was about to drop some plot twist stuff. Okay, like I was gonna say <laughs> we could do your idea, or I could drop my plot go twist. Go ahead, to you. go ahead. I didn't realize you were gonna do that. Go ahead and drop your plot. Twist. Okay, so here's what I was thinking, and again, I'm sorry if we screw up Matt's idea, but I mean he's sending it in. He can. Yeah. It's still yeah. his idea. Yeah. That's you... another thing too. If you guys send in your ideas, we don't own them, and like. I okay. mean, if you guys wanted, it's not a property thing. Like, no, yeah, these like, ideas if you guys even wanted us to post something, we could. Like, but that's just like we'll go on record now saying like we don't own the idea that you send. It's just you sending it. To Unless us. it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then whoa, that's a Marcus idea. Weird. Yeah, um, I don't know. Anyway, you know. Um, but also, I'm very sorry if you have like what you think is a really cool idea and we butcher it. Yeah, and like we and we do something that we think is really cool with it. And we're like, oh, dude, this is so tight. And you're like, what the frick? I hate this. I mean, like. You send it in. You yeah. can send it in somewhere else, too. You, you dropped your idea to the subject subjugation of two other people with you not being there to defend what you thought made it cool and special. Mm-hmm. Here's what I think would be cool, though. Personally. Towards the end of the movie, she starts to have, like, lapses in judgment, and it's, like, little small things. Like, let's say she like trips or it is just having like small spatial awareness things are kind of throwing off and then like at the end of the movie we kind of imply that like maybe she's been here a lot longer than she thinks she has and she's been cloned a few times already huh so like so like the first time like maybe she's like fudges like like oh my bad and then keeps speaking normally or something and like the next time she like is like walking down the thing and just like takes a door frame in the shoulder and like like ah oh, that hurt like I mean I do that all the time so yeah. I don't... <laughs> Yeah but just like yeah. like and I think like it would be cool and kind of a thing like to I think we should we should cast this as a live action movie. Yeah. I think it would be cool. Who's a phenomenal actress? Think about that while I keep going. Uh oh, so shoot. so like as she does this and I cause I think like if she's like we have like a very good actress who sells this eventually like we get to the point in the movie when, like, bigger things are happening, but, like, it's been so gradual, you don't even really notice till the end when you see, like, oh, like, I might have been here for, oh, there's a clone of, oh, okay. this has been happening, and then die. Roll credits. Yeah. So, like, so what you're saying is she's going to be a clone all along, and this is... Well, not a clone all along. At some point in the movie, she's she cloned. does something. Like, I'm saying that, like, we play with time weird, because... So anything that dies oh, or gets that. old, movies, like play with time weird and it's hard to follow. Okay. Yeah, but like here's the thing: but, like, yeah, it's it good. doesn't it's seem hard to follow. Yeah. So, and this is the girl that was originally in the pod, right? Yeah, this is Sophie. So, like, do we want her to be like she came from somewhere else? Like she from did Earth come from or somewhere else. Yeah, like from Earth or something like that, and whatever this place is that's cloning. It's just a spaceship in space. Yeah. I mean, is it? Well, is it a it... human spaceship? Is it another race? I mean, it's just full of do humans. You even... Okay, so it is full of humans, but they're all clones. Yes, yeah. but they're the last of humanity. So what if it was like everyone on Earth was dying? Everybody on Earth like, is dead. This is the yeah. last of humanity. Did it say that at the beginning? Yes. He said, probably, okay, oh sorry boy, Ian. Did My you bad, listen at all? I did, I did, I did. Next time we do this, I'm going to like freaky and be like, all right, pencil's ready. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about it. How pencil's close ready, all right. How close are you Testing to time. <laughs> Apparently not very well. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Um, but, so, like, so everyone on Earth is dead. So these people clearly are, like... This is some, the last yeah, of humanity, yes. Someone clearly sent someone up there with the ability to be able to clone themselves in order to keep humanity alive. That's clearly what this must be, but I would I don't, think. I don't even think we have to, like, reference Earth. And if we do reference Earth, I think the only relevant thing that Earth has to do is we say what happened on Earth to put people in space rather than being on Earth. Yeah. Like, we say, oh, and, like, and it can be something as flimsy as, flimsy as like, there was, like, a, a nuclear, like, all-out nuclear war. Earth wasn't habitable anymore. We bailed the space. Then we realized, like, we couldn't do this. So we're, like, how do we gain longevity? Because, like, like and, like, we can, okay, so, like, how about this? Like, yeah, it has a system on it that will grow food 
and keep air and everything going, like life support system. But it's maxed at a certain number of people. Yeah. So, like, they couldn't have children or make children, right, because of, like, a population issue. So then as they grew, as they were getting older, and this is going to be, like, stuff that she, like, investigates throughout the movie and kind of figures out. As they get older, they start thinking, like, how do we preserve the human race if we can't make more humans? Like, if we... So, like, if we make more humans and we allow people to start doing that... Yeah. So then, it then we, the we, we run out of life support system and we all die and then humans are over. So if we can't do that, what's the next option? But cloning people would still make it a higher population as well. No, because every time a, a clone comes, they kill the Oh, that's original. right. You're right. So did it say in there how often they clone it? How often they clone it? When they seem defected. Just whenever they seem defected. Hmm. Yeah, like, I, I could get behind that. I don't really have anything to add. So, like, she, like, and, like, she, like, is figuring out all this, and, like, it's, like, a whole, like, she kind of investigates this. Uh, here's my question. Like, this is, like, a legitimate question I have about it. What tone do we want it to have? Like, do we want it to seem, like, very, like, off-putting and weird and, like, super suspenseful to where, like... At any given point, we feel like kind of the ship is against her and trying to stop and kill her. So, like, the ship is alive. Well, kind of alive, because, like, it's making the choice to clone her. Yeah. Now, okay, what about this again? Okay. Better idea. Ship is sort of alive. Yeah. And this might not be a better idea, but I want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Ship is sort of alive to the extent that it doesn't want people to know the truth behind what's going on in the ship. Yeah. Right? So, as she investigates it, like, the ship is trying to actively stop her from finding that out. Hmm. However, there's a, there's a thing in the ship's programming that says, like, it can't not clone. Like, it has to, to where it cannot kill and not have a clone ready to replace that person. Like, that would... To, to make sure that, the, like, it didn't, like, ever just override or something and kill all of them. Yeah. It can't do that. It has to have a clone. So, as she's investigating, at every turn, there's something coming to kill her or coming to get her. And it always appears to her... Because you know how, like, sometimes, like, when you wake up from a dream and you remember things and it's all hazy? Yeah. And they say, like, you sort of, like, fill in things to make it make more sense to you? So, what about this? It comes to kill her... And she fills in the blanks and says, oh, I got away because she wakes up and says, oh, I must have gotten away. Here's what I remember. Hmm. However, every single time that happens in the movie, she actually dies and she's a clone. And then at the very end, she realizes, oh, I've, how long have I? How many times have I died? Have I, I died? Am I, how many times have I been yeah. a clone? How far gone am I? And then she realizes all of this, sees the thing coming to kill her again. Roll credits. Yeah. So, like, she never stops the... Stops the... No. Spaceship. I kind of like that. I like that because then there's no, like... You know, like, everyone's going to think she's going to stop it because, you know, it's like a good versus evil stuff. But it doesn't. It's not like it's a, I mean, a like, spaceship's a bad thing. I mean, it is, but... Like, is it a bad thing, though? It's just this... It's like, just it, this it was programmed humans. by humans, and they were doing their best to prolong the human race. Like, yeah. I don't even think that the ship is necessarily evil as much as, like... It's not so much it's alive, a program. and as much as it's a program that, like, if you let the mass populace know, hey, <laughs> as you get, like, really old or, like, a bad disease, we're just going to kill you and clone you. Like, that's going to be a thing that freaks out a lot of people. So they, they program it to, like, not let people know what's going on. Yeah. And then it kind of just escalates out of their hands. Hmm. So, like, what if that was with everyone, then? So everyone just thought, like, no one knew that they were... Yeah, nobody so like, knows. Yeah, so like... Nobody knows. So you her. wake up one morning, and like, you're... <laughs> you're just you're, trying to apply this to real life? No, 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 as far as... No, as far as... No, I'm saying like... Are you like, a real no. person, Marcus, or a clone? No, like, if you... Like, in this movie, like, say, such and such character, not this main character, like, wakes up in the morning, goes about their day, you know, something happens to them where they, you know, are defective or something. They get killed, a new clone gets made immediately, wakes up the next day, and they think they're them. Like, there's no... Yeah. No, it's no, no. very like the clones don't know they're being yeah. cloned. The clones don't 
know that. The, and, and like, they the just think it's a even, dream. Like, yeah, they just think they might, like, have a dream or something, but, like, they still think it's just them, you know? Yeah, like, no, yeah, it's for the sure. Same person. Like, the yeah. clones, the clones don't even know that they're getting worse. So, like, the clones that are walking into walls repeatedly or anything don't realize that they're broken or dumb because they're broken and dumb, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, they, they think that life is just as normal and, like, they're in space and there's no way to track days, like, time. So, like, for all they know, and, like, they lose track. Like, have I been here for, like, am I, am, have we found a way to live longer in space? And we, like, kind of mutated because of some sort of weird radiation in our space to where, am I a hundred years old? Have we been here for a hundred years? Have we been here for a thousand years? And what if there's, like, How, no to- yeah, time either, so yeah, they like, don't yeah, even they know. Don't, yeah, they don't. They have no recollection of time or anything, or really any memories. Yeah, they don't have day-night cycles, like, they're not next to, or, like, they're not on Earth, and, like, they're, they don't know, any, they're so oblivious, and she, since she was in suspended animation rather than being cloned and becoming stupider over time, she's the only person who goes and sees because they're so defective now, mm-hmm. what they've become. Yeah. Yeah, I could get behind that. That sounds like a cool sci-fi. Um, now, do you want it to be like a movie, or I could see it a show, but like a miniseries, like a one-season show, that's it. There's one season. Well, it says, I feel like um, we, kind of, we sort of played Calvin Ball with um, some of the, Matt's idea, and it says movie or book, so I say we go with one of the things he said. Okay, yeah. However, I could I could see this being like if you put time and effort into it, you could definitely make this a movie and yeah. not make it seem boring, but also get a lot in there. I mean, it costs a lot cuz of all cuz it's sci-fi and in space. Like, or it would it cost would it cost much. that much? Like if you do a just if you just make a really good and big practical set. That's true. Like because like think about it, she's not getting killed in every scene or anything. There's not like a weird robot thing coming to kill them. It's just a bunch of people in a very big spaceship. That's true. So like if you have a good enough practical set, then yeah. you only need CG for what? A robot that kills her maybe a handful of times, and then a scene where you see a bunch of pods. And then a scene where like you could do this like super low budget. I think that would even like make it creepier for the scenes and more on edge for the scenes where she is getting chased if it's very, not low budget, but, like, practical, to where, like, physical lights turn off and she has to, like, physically run through this big set that is made as, like, this CG, and the only thing that's going to be CG is this robot thing chases her. Like, I think, like, that would make it more suspenseful, personally, but... Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying there. That's that's the idea. I totally get behind that idea. That's cool. I'm a fan, yeah. I think that's cool. So I guess uh, we'll take a commercial break, and then we'll be right back, and I'll roll the die, and, uh, about the dice, die, and roll pitch my die. die. So, <laughs> uh, commercial break. Um, Marcus, you got anything to say for the commercial break, first off? Um, check out my stand-up. Not really, I don't have anything to say. Um. Give Ian a hard time about not moving in. Oh, yeah. Um, I also started a second podcast, episode one, went up last week, it's called Radio Highway, The World of Music, uh, it's just me talking for like half an hour to an hour about music and bands, and I might do some album reviews, so go check that out, um, and don't, and go ahead and make fun of my voice on the show, because I didn't, I was not happy with it, and so I EQ'd it really weird, and it sounds Yeah, like, I was very, biz- I was like, the heck? Yeah, my voice, like, I didn't realize it until I posted it and listened back, like, what, my voice sounds like a freaking robot. (laughs) Yeah, you sound super bizarre. Like, I sound like a child. Anyway, I didn't mean for it to be that bad, but I wasn't paying, it was also late, too. I was just like, my voice sounds kind of muffled. Let me EQ this out really extreme. Upload it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, but whatever, I mean, I don't care, it doesn't sound terrible, it just was weird. Um, it doesn't sound bad, it's just, it's just, it's just bizarre. Weird. Like, you would not, if you only heard audio for this show, and only heard audio for your other podcast, you would not think that it was the same host. Nope. <laughs> or you'd think, be like, why is Ian posting this thing that he recorded, like, pre-puberty? Like, what? Yeah. Like, that's, like, the most you would think. You'd be like, what? Um, so, yeah, go check that out. Um, also, go support us on Patreon. Uh, I'm saying it right before. I said I called it Patreon before. It's Patreon. <laughs> what? It's, it's www.patreon.com/slash. Uh, the Imagination Warehouse is what it is because that's 
or Imagination Warehouse Network, excuse me, because that's um, what this show is under. You can uh, you can support that. There's also uh, there's there's different levels of support. There's one where like it supports just this show. One where it supports the whole network. Um, there um uh, also like just like a little bit of a, a a tease and a spoiler like no promises for how soon this is gonna happen, but um. There could be, like, a few, like, skit, like, some skit work coming to the, sh- to the channel. Really? Like, your comedy stuff, or? No, like, I mean, like, I don't mean, like, skit as in, like, I mean, like, skit. Like. Oh, yeah? A script is written and, and stuff like that. And That'd be cool. acted. Like, there, there might be, there. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to do more stuff anyway, like I've been talking about... There for sure is going to be skit yeah. work coming at some point. I don't know how soon it's going to happen, but there will be skit work coming to the channel at some point. Okay. This year. Cool. A buddy of mine are working on it, so... Cool. We'll see. But, like, but get kind of... So be on the lookout yeah, for that, yeah. Get excited for it. It's probably going to be, like, at least a few weeks, because we're going to have to get together to finish the scripts and everything and compare notes about the ideas we're working on. And then we'll probably act most of it in our stuff. Like, most of it, like, most of our ideas we'll need, four, I think, like, the most we needed was, like, four people for one. Okay. So, like, it's not like we need, like, a ton of people and we can use it and stuff, but we have some ideas. Um, fair warning, it, we keep everything pretty soft PG. Yeah. I'm not going to guarantee that those will be a very soft PG. Okay. Not like R or anything. No, 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 but no, no, like no. a they will get uh, they will get racier than this. Fourteen something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, cool. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Um, if you again, if you want to support the skits and stuff, support. Go to Patreon. And, and, and again, <laughs> anything we don't think is suitable for children, we will label as such. Yeah. So like. If, if we release adult content or something... We will say... We will say, hey, don't watch this with your kid, probably. Yeah. So. Cool. But yeah, be on the lookout and give us lots of feedback on it, because I'm, I'm very excited and hesitant to do this at the same time. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. That sounds cool. I haven't, I've not even talked to Ian about this. Like, Ian doesn't know yeah. about any of the ideas. Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might talk about this after the show now, but... Cool. Well, you want to get back to the show, or you want to sing a jingle? Oh, frick. This caution tape that you... I don't know what that... I turned off all of them. All of them. Oh, my goodness. I muted every alarm on my phone. Oh, my goodness, Marcus. I'm not cutting this out. You're going to... You're going to look like the freaking... It's weird. It's weird. Dingus whose phone keeps going off. No, Ian, it's weird. First of all, um... One of us looking bad on the show reflects bad on both of us, and it's also, it's weird, Ian, nobody expected you to cut it out. That would imply that you edited the show. So, like, I, I like nobody... how you say that, but you don't do any work yourself on the show, uh, production-wise. Who has, who has a pitch ready every single week? Yeah, who brings the ca- Okay, I can't say that. No, <laughs> who, I, I who brings the camera, camera most weeks and always has sometimes an SD card? Ian. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um... Okay, fair enough. We both do this very half-heartedly. Uh, no, I do this very that. full-heartedly. <laughs> well, maybe one day except, we'll be able to both quit our jobs here. and we'll be able to do this full-time. If you guys go to patreon.com slash... <laughs> I, like, I feel like go ahead there's a middle us. ground between doing <laughs> remotely any editing at all and putting a full-time worth of out of editing. But, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but no, really... Man, okay, so... I'm, I'm still muting all my alarms. Hold on. Right. This is going to be a second. I'll go ahead and sing. This caution tape that you've wrapped around my mind. Brain. Brain, I'm sorry. I messed it up. <laughs> Frick, Ian! Yeah. Right, you dog? All right. And we're back from the commercial break. And it's my turn. There we go. Five. That's a five. <laughs> what if it's one we already used? <laughs> Um, That'd be great. Frick, it's one with... No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who sent this one in? This is by Matt, of oh. course. I mean, like, no, because, like, we've hardly done any Matt ideas, and he had, like, 80% of them. Yeah. It's weird. It's okay. weird. Uh, so this is by Matt Sampson. I don't... Um, and, uh, which we haven't done in M-Cubes in a while. Maybe 
we can get him to send one in. So this would be a movie or a book. Um, two dinguses do uh, a podcast where they no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, it's pretty short. A group of high school seniors skip out of one of the last days of school of the school year to take a road trip to see a haunted house. So this visual, visualize that in your mind. Uh, told mostly from the point of view of one character that has an obsession with self-destructiveness, like the girl that's with them because of her smoking habit. Uh, the other two guys are class clown types, and the main character reflects on how they won't ever amount to much of anything. <coughs> also, uh, Regular teen angst movie stuff. Yep. Also includes flashbacks of a time when the same group visited a fortune teller, and she throws the money back at the main character. Uh, and she's horrified because he doesn't have a lifeline. At the end of the day, they decide to cruise by an abandoned house that's supposedly haunted and stay the night. The main character sees the ghost, and instead of your typical ghost, she looks like an old rotting woman, inspired somewhat by Robert Heinlein's... Hein, I hope I pronounced that right, and don't sound like a complete idiot. Description of the Rodin sculpture, the old quartz... Courtson? Courtson. I like how you said, like, a question mark, like, I can answer it. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, I know who's less of a dunce than me, Mark. Oh, frick. Not right. And, Not correct. Uh, following through on the self-destruction theme, he decides to go away with the ghost. Hmm. So this seems, like, kind of almost horror-ish. Like, it almost makes me think of, like, a Stephen King thing. Um, Stephen King, I don't know who that is. Very, he's a writer. Did a lot of, like, horror stuff. He wrote uh, Shawshank Redemption, which I just saw that movie, by the way, the other day. That is a good movie. That's episode two. With what? Of what? Uh, worth the Hype. Oh, really? Shawshank Redemption. With Morgan Freeman, and yeah, that's a great movie. Mm -hmm. Super good. Um, the last episode? I know we already did the commercial break. Wait, you haven't even posted however, any episodes. However, the last episode? Silence of the Lambs. Frick that movie for real, though. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Um, so, ah. this group of high school teenagers, there's, uh, hold on. Let's give them names. Names, yeah, hold names on. right away. Yep. There's four of them. Four of them, yeah. One character, very See? self destructive. She's a um, chick. Yeah, it's a She's girl. She's a smoking habit. So, like, I'm picturing, like. What about smoke? Like, smoke? <laughs> this is a dumb joke, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, like, I'm picturing, like, um, almost like. A female version of Reese from Malcolm in the Middle. Like, very into, like, just, like, kind of... Being the worst human? Yeah, just, like, because it says she has self-destructive habits and all that and, like, smoking. It and doesn't like, say she's an idiot, though. Yeah, I guess you're right. But, like, I was just picturing, like, a very terrible human being with no morals and just kind of... Um, but, like, let's give her a name. Okay, what about Adolf Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> let's... As how about, a, a little uh, topical Hitler joke for you guys. How about Chloe? I mean, that sounds like way too nice oh, of a name, but oh, that'd be kind of funny. Like, it's well, just really... Well, we could lean harder into it. What about Hope? We could name her Hope. <laughs> no, I think that's too far. I think that sounds <laughs> I mean, dumb. We, no, okay, no. Chloe works. Uh, Chloe, okay. Okay, the two class clowns. Um, the two class clowns. What about clown. Fred and George Weasley? <laughs> How about Ian and Marcus? <laughs> Weasley. Weasley. Ian Fred. and Marcus Weasley. <laughs> um, let's do... Okay, yeah, let's base them kind of like Fred and George. Like, they're very much... They could Just even be brothers, this. or at least cousins or something. Like, they're they're very much class clowns. They pull pranks, and they're very close with each other. Um, how about, like, Sam and... What Will? about Mary Sam and, and Will. Sam and Will. Okay. How about Sam and Will? Um... Can or I name Sam, this last guy? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, trust you're just, me. You're no. throwing out really yeah, no bad names. ones. No, no, they're all jokes. So I can, um, can I name this last one? And then this... No, the one, main character guy? Yeah, the main character is the one that kind of telling the story. He's going to be more serious. Brad. Brad? Brad. Okay. All right. I'm big fan of the name Brad. Really? We have to say it like that. Brad. 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 <laughs> okay. So we have, we have Chloe. Chloe. Sam. Sam Will, Will. Brad. 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 <laughs> um, okay. So they leave school one of the last days of school and take a road trip to a haunted house. So how do they hear about this haunted house? Like, do you want it to just be like a folklore legend of oh, the school? Oh, for sure. Like <laughs> every senior claims to have gone to this haunted house and spent the night there and it's like this whole big thing. It's a small town. 
And so they're finally doing this. And do you want them to be very much like almost like I'm picturing like Mystery Inc. esque as far as like this group of teenagers in a van driving to some haunted house. Do you want them to be kind of like like Mystery Inc. has a very unique relationship between the characters. Do you want it to be kind of like that? I think that it'd be better if it's like more realistic to actual teenagers to where like they kind of don't care. Like, yeah. like, I feel like, like, Mr. Inc. is, like, they have, like, a purpose. Like, with this, our job as we go and we essentially bust mysteries and stuff. Like, if it's very much just, like, they're, they, I think, like, small town's good. They live in a small town. They're bored. And they think, like, one is self-destructive behavior because she's bored all the time. The other two just do nothing but pull pranks and slack off because they're bored all the time and don't care. And they're teens. Yeah. They're millennials. <laughs> Do you, want, and wait, then do you want this set in, like, now's time? Yeah. Okay. And then Brad, I think, is very much just, like, I live in a small town. My dad's, let's say, like, a farmer. Yeah. He's going to try to give me this farm. Like, the most I'm going to amount to is I'm going to live in a small town, own a farm myself, and give it yeah. to my kid. Like, I'm not going to do anything special in my life. And we kind of, so, like, a very much, like, the beginning to a very good coming of age story where they don't learn the lesson or come to age. Okay. Like, I think is kind of a good way to frame this. Okay. To like, it yeah. is framed in a way that, like, you would think in a happy movie, these kids go and they, and learn, they learn some kind the, of lesson. The error of their ways and, and they yeah. become a little more grown up. But it's up. more of a horror type story, so and, like. And Anthony's just like, I want a piece, I'm gonna go hang out with the ghosts, bye. Yeah. So. So then. I know this main character is telling the story, but since uh, this girl is kind of like she ends it by going to hang out with the ghost, like do we want he it very ends much? It, I thought. Who goes? Brad. Brad. Oh, that's right. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> Hold on. Did I listen to Ian's thing better than you no, have no, in no, front no, of no, you? No, no, no. Hold on. But uh, what happens? I th- yeah. Hold on. No, they get haunted by the ghost, and right, Brad right. bails to hang out with the ghost. Yeah, that's right. Why was I thinking it was the girl that named it? Anyway, whatever. Anyway, um, so so it's then very much going to be about Brad. About Brad. Brad. And it's going to be... And then... So, like, these friends are going to be supporting characters. And uh, do you want them to have, like, backstories or something? I think that it would be interesting to see them, like, a week prior talking about skipping school, the lies they have ready for their parents and kind of thing. Yeah. Where we see, like... A few scenes prior to what them if, leaving. And, like, what if the self-destructive girls, like... Like, what if, like, the, the two boys, what if they're, like... Like, they're both... Because they get into b- misbehavior or whatever. What if they're, like, kind of rich rich kids or whatever. And they, like, have some... Ela- they each have an elaborate scheme that they, like, hash out with each other to get their parents... Lie to their parents so that they can skip school. But then what if the self-destruct girl is just, like... Oh yeah, mom, dad, I'm not going to school today. See ya, bye. And it's like she has like a you know single druggy mom or something like that, just to make it even more dark as to why she's like that. Also, what if she thinks that's like they're going? So like the the two goofsters are going because they're bored. Brad's going because he like has a sense of the fantastical and like wants it to be real because he wants his life to be special and different and she thinks it is real and wants to go get murdered by a ghost because she doesn't care about life anymore yeah and like what if like Brad I mean, they leaves, all have like, different motivations yeah like what if he he leaves like and like he just had like a really bad fight with his parents and his parents are pretty decent people but he's just like fed up the with this, this simple normal life and then that's why he leaves with the ghost okay so or I think like I think like we can frame it and just Brad leaves with the ghost because Brad thinks that life is is he thinks his life is boring and lame and he's not going to amount to anything. So he he makes the choice to be like, what's not boring and lame, leaving to go to like wherever. So with and, the ghost. And I see what threw me off here was it says and following through on the self destruction theme, he decides to go with the ghost. So I was thinking self destruction. Which is the girl. They all um, have self-destructive tendencies, though. Yeah. She's the one who's, like, a hardcore smoker and stuff, though. Yeah, I told mostly from the point of view of one character. Wait a minute. We totally misunderstood this. Told mostly from the point of view of one character that has an obsession with self-destructiveness. Like the girl that's with them because of her smoking. Okay. So, they, yeah, you're right. They both do. Um, 
So I, I wasn't wrong. And I had an understanding of what was going on again for both pitches. Whatever. Shut up. <laughs> I hate you. No, I just, I, I read that uh, a little differently. That's okay. Um, that was all good. So, yeah. Uh, so, like, how hardcore do we want them to get haunted? Like, well, first of all, I had something I, I had something I want to bring up. If he goes away with the ghost, does he become a like? Should he become a ghost, or should he just? I like, think he should end. I think I think he just ends. Like, and you don't know. I think he walks away with the ghost. He kind of disappears, and they're like, "What? Roll credits." Yeah. <laughs> like what? So like, what if? Okay. So it's after. Let's let's jump forward to where they all have ditched school and they have a meeting place. They meet, and they get. They get into whoever's car. You want to let's say it's Brad's truck because he lives on a farm. He has a pickup up truck. Yeah, it's a pickup truck. Let's say they're all, um, and uh, let's say he's the one. So he's the one driving. Uh, they're all seniors. We've established that. And uh, how far away do you want the haunted house to be? Like, is it gonna be on the other end of town? Like, it's. Uh, you know, I think it should be like I don't know. Like they gotta drive some like. Less than, like they gotta get like four hours away. Like, okay. they're, they're they're down like four hours away. So like it's so like enough of their to where like town. they tur- they turn on the radio and you could have like some really killer song to like kind of set the mood of the show because I feel like that really that can make or break a a show or movie. Like, like um, if there's a really good you know good song and not just some stupid crappy pop song. What about this? And then. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. That's suffocation. Don't give up. If I kept myself, see, and it's all self-destruction. That'd be yeah. We'll see. I was kind of thinking like in Stranger Things when should I stay or should I go place, and then it's a theme throughout the entire show of that song playing, like having a song like like they turn on the radio, and that's that song, and then like what if they're going through the house and that song is playing or like one of them has like headphones or something um i just thought that like add a unique dynamic kind of okay anyway setting the mood i mean you're the one who has your hands more firmly on the wheel this time yeah so they're about four hours away they come to this haunted house um and uh how do we want them to like enter the haunted house I mean, I think they, they should do the classic doors unlock, they walk in, door closes behind them, it's locked. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, mean, you want, that's like, kind of cheesy, but... I think, wanna, like, no, I think, like, that's, like, the best. Like, that's why I kind of pose that as a question. I don't I don't want to be too cheesy, but I think, it, I mean, they just. I yeah, guess they, if it is, like, an angsty teenage movie, then that might not be terrible. Yeah, but, like, they walk in. I mean, I don't even, like, they're, like... What if, what if the, the two boys and the girl walk in that way? And what if Brad stays behind for a minute? Uh, like finishes out the song, whatever, and then he goes he goes around through the back, through like one of those old. Remember in those like those houses, and I don't know what kind of neighborhood you grew up if you grew up in a newer neighborhood or whatever. But I grew up in an old neighborhood, and they're like the houses. Are you just trying to introduce be, the idea of a cellar? There'd be like the cellars, but the, it'd be like weird sticking out, you know, and like you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, it just feels like not a lot of people know those, but because I haven't seen them in a long time. But anyway, so on the it's one of those houses. He walks around to the back. That's open. Or it's like, it's unlocked. He kind of rattles the handle. He opens it. He goes in into the, directly into the basement. We and, then have to And ask, then you don't see him. You don't see him. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Have they ever played D&D before? Because if they have, not going to work. He never split the party. Never split the party? Well, this isn't a D&D campaign. These aren't... I don't no, want to say asking, that these, asking, oh, these no, characters aren't no, necessarily so like, nerds. Like, how, no, no. I'm saying, but like, how... So like, okay, here's the thing. What reason, though? Like, I'm like, I'm not even saying it's a bad idea, but I was like, what motivation does he have to ride four hours with people he's supposedly sort of friends with, get there, they walk in, he chills, and then goes a different no, way No, 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 no. What, what if he goes up to the door, but it's locked now from the outside as well? So he, that's why he goes around in the back. He goes in, and then you don't see him for a while, and the other three, they get haunted, and... Well, we'll kind of fill in the middle, but jumping to the end of kind of my point, he he finds the ghost first, and then they find the ghost, and then like that's when they see him leave with the ghost, and it's because he went in that other way and he found the ghost and all that, and he kind of like had some kind of bond with or something, and then that's why he left. Like I don't, I, it could be I don't, I, don't I think it'd be, but I guess you're right. Like there is something about not splitting up the party, so. 
you know. I mean, and feel free to comment below what you think about that, because I'm, I'm kind of curious. I think that could go well, but... Do we want... And then, like, is it going to be, like, one of those... No, I, I, I think it's better... I was going to say, like, do we want it to be, like, one of those where, like, somebody, like, a bunch of people kind of die one by one, and, like, only one but person... But they don't die. Yeah, but I think that, like... It, it's better and more impactful. If none of them die, they're all going to get out safe, and Brad makes the choice to bail with the ghost. Now, when it says bail, like, does he stay... Does a ghost stay in the house and he chooses to live there in the house, or is the ghost now leaving? I say, and like, leaves with the ghost. they're all about to leave. The ghost kind of stops them from running, like, out an open door. This is how I envision it. They're all about to leave together. The ghost comes to them in less of, like, a haunting way, more, like, shows up. Do you want, they like, all kind of stop in their tracks, and Brad, like, makes eye contact with it, looks back at his friends, and then looks back at the ghost, and him and the ghost kind of just walk, disappear into nothingness, and the rest of them can kind of just leave. Yeah. But, like, like that way, so because, like, I think it, it is better if it is presented in such a way that, like, Brad is doing this because he wants his life to be different. Yeah. And he's not, like, getting forced or hypnotized or coerced in any way by the ghost to leave. He wants his life to be different. So he's making the choice to throw away everything else and leave with this ghost. Hmm. Yeah. And, like, I, I think, think it is more impactful end, yeah. if, like, if they all see that. Like, they all they all watch him make the choice yeah. to leave. And then, like, how about it changes them, too? Like, those those two boys are now much more serious than they were take life a little bit more seriously. And this girl who's so self-destructive, like... So, like, they do kind of learn a lesson in a way. It's like, Except now, for Brad. Brad doesn't learn yeah, a lesson. Yeah, Brad doesn't learn a lesson, but, like, he was the sacrifice that caused the other three now to learn, have learned this lesson. Like, now the girl's like, oh, wow, maybe, like, I should look at my life a little bit more and, like, see what I can do with my life. You maybe know? I and should like, stop smoking and start vaping. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, those other two boys are now a little bit more serious, kind of care a little bit more, you know? Um, yeah. I can get behind it. I think that's cool. I'm not mad at it. I mean, that's pretty much the whole idea. Um, I think it definitely, like, we, we kind of pitched it as a movie. And I think it'd be a very interesting movie, but I think it'd be almost a more successful book, too. Because, like, I don't know. I could see it as both. I'll put it that way. Like, he has movie or book. Um, do we want to wrap it up or do we have yeah, more thoughts I'm, on it? I don't know, I'm trying to think if there's anything more I want to say about it, but that's pretty much all I got. Um, thanks for watching the show. Um, thank you, Tim Schoenfeld, for our theme song, Footy Pajamas. Yep. Somebody at work the other day said something. I, I said something about music, and they're like, oh, I was like, like, like the song you guys had written. I was like, what do you mean had written? She's like, like, like the song for, for, from your podcast. I was like, that was the song. I was like, we know the guy who wrote that song. That wasn't written for the show. She's like, what? I was like, that's just a song that he wrote that we yeah, asked. That's why. And, and, like, and then she goes, then she goes, well, who wrote it? I was like, have you ever watched an episode? We say thank you at the end every episode. We say thank you, Tim Schoenfeld. And she's like, we might as well start oh. saying thank you at the beginning. <coughs> oh, oh, she's like, well, she's like, oh, that's who that is. I was like, what do you mean that's who that is? We say thank you, Tim Schoenfeld, for our theme song, Footy Pajamas. Like, how do you, well, how do you misconstrue that? Yeah. And it's funny, and sometimes like I even like specify, like you'll say thanks for our theme song, and I'll say. Thanks for the song that, like, you're letting us use. Like, it is totally his song. Yeah, thank you for and, the like, theme And we've said that every episode. That's really funny. Footy but Pajamas. That just goes Written by you. Tim Schoenfeld. I think people... Does he have a SoundCloud or anything that we can... <laughs> like, uh, no, not currently. But, um, I think... When, when it's, it seems like people, like, they'll watch some of our show and then they don't finish it because it's one really long, which is fine. But I think, like, especially maybe because we have the timestamps, maybe they jump around a bit on it. I don't know. I'm just. I'm only speculating. Um, it is a very long show, so I understand if they. It's not that long bit. though for a podcast. There are a lot of really long podcasts. For a video though, we're but like an hour that, long. There's a lot of hour long podcasts. Yeah. I would um, like to get a website though, so like people could download it and listen. Because I feel like that. I don't know. Like, for me, when I listen to a podcast, it's nice to be able to download it so I can listen to it. You know, not just stream it, but. Uh, like, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have a preference, but, like, yeah, I understand. Like, I think, like, yeah. the idea of, like, there's something special about being a podcast and having an audio-only format, but, um... Yeah. Also, like, yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, I think as soon as, like, Tim does have stuff out there, that we should also pimp that. Like, as soon as, yeah. like, there is a way for people to get a hold of his music, 
we should also share that. Be like, hey. Yeah, and that'll be kind of our thanks to yeah. using footy pajamas. Yeah. Because like I, I'm also like I'm just a fan of it. Like yeah, it's such like a in, good song. In, in, in the same no, like just like a lot of his music. Like in the same yeah. vein that like I talk about Weezer and I talk about like bands that I like. Like oh, like this is good music that I like. I, I would talk about a lot of yeah. his songs. Like oh, this is a good artist. I like listen to this stuff. I, I've talked about that too. Like people have asked me, oh, who's your favorite songwriter? I, or one of my favorite songs, I'd be like someone that you have no idea who it is, because but like I, I really like Tim's style of writing, so it, it's yeah very special. Um, like not like I said special, and like sometimes it's construed in a bad way, but not in a bad way. It is yeah, very special in, in a good just, way. Yeah, um, um, very creative, honest. Um, yeah, um, let's wrap up the show. Let's this. Yeah, that was a, well, that, <laughs> that was that was a good thank you to, to to Tim for the theme yeah. song. Essentially, there's a very talented person who wrote a song that we asked if we could use for our show. Show and it's great. And he said so, yes, so thank you um, for letting us use that song. Thank you for all you guys for watching the show. Um, it makes it like we've talked about this before. Uh, Please interact with us. It wouldn't matter if you guys watch it all. We still do this show, but it makes it a heck of a lot more fun to yeah. know. Like if there's people that view it. But it makes it even more fun if you guys interact with us. So comment below, send an email to let me pitch this to you at gmail.com. If That'll you see be in us the on the street, say hi. Yeah, you know. Throw, it's snowy, throw a snowball at one of us. Like, frick, just like, go ahead. You can, come prank, pen, you can like, come prank Marcus's house at boop, 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 boop on Avenue, boop, Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, why does your note say bus, 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 bus? <laughs> Any oh other bits we want to bring back real quick for the end? No, I think that's good. <laughs> okay. Ready? <laughs> when others are trapped in their beds, that's when I am free. Thanks to footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Footy, 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 footy pajamas. Let me be